we're going to look at direct offline processing and why I use it. Now, once you get into using this, you may find you've got your own workflows and by all means, um, leave a comment on what you use it for. I tell you what I find it so useful for is on things like effects. That's why I've just put these in as a demo for in a minute. We're going to have a look at these. So I've literally put a riser, a reverse crash, a bit of a crash. Um, it's a way of taking audio events, so it can be anything in Cubase, anything audio, and actually using direct offline processing, which is F7's the shortcut, I think, and under audio, um, it's, it's on the menu under audio, and you can print effects directly to the audio event. This saves you having to click the E or whatever and then adding insert effects, which will work exactly the same. So I can add a reverb and a delay in here as an insert. But what you've got to imagine is if you've got an old PC like I'm using here, that insert's going to be running for the duration of the track. And if I've got, a, say, these effects here, they're happening quite sporadically in my, in my song. I don't want to be running that reverb and delay in the background, hogging processor power and stuff. So that's one good thing it's good for. The other good thing is, is as it works instantaneously, it prints the actual effect information to the audio. You can actually see how that tail is going to look. So if I put a reverb and a delay on here, well, I'll show you in a minute, you can actually see it affecting the audio as it goes. And you don't have to think about it as being um, destructive because it's, it's non-destructive in the fact that you can get your, um, you, can, you can change the effects retrospectively. So say two days down the line, I was working on this mix and I decided I actually don't like that delay I was using or the reverb was, the tail was too long. You can go back to, as long as you highlight the audio event you're working on, go back to the offline process, direct offline processing, and you can still manipulate that effect. You can still modify the effect. So don't think of it that once you print it, there's no going back. Whereas if you if you render audio, which we'll look at as well, generally you've got to commit to that much more. Whereas this, we can always go back to the original form. So what I'm going to do is lasso all of them. So I'm going to left click, highlight them all. So all of my audio events, this means that all these ones selected, I'm going to affect all of them with direct offline processing. If I want it, only wanted to affect these two, I can obviously um, highlight those two. So Remember F7 or audio, direct offline processing. And then we can add the plugins in here. We've also got processes you can add in here as well if you wanted to um, change the gain structure, do a fade in, etc. They're all written there. But what we're interested in doing is actually creating a bit of a tail to these. So this reverse impact doesn't just stop and sound quite unnatural. I want it to the reverb to tail away. So I'm, I'm going to go to my plugins list and I'm going to add a stereo delay. Now, while I'm doing this, even though this computer is really laggy because I'm recording video as well, I'm going to hit stereo delay. And can you see how that's changed the tail already for me? It really did affect those audio files straight away because I've got an eighth note delay running on the left and a quarter note here. Now, if I turn down the mix or the feedback of these, can you see how that's changing the structure of the audio file as we go? So if I turn my feedback up, you can actually see it actually changing the structure, which I think is quite cool. It means I can sort of judge how that tail is going to look as well visually, which is quite cool. I'm just going to turn the mix down. Now, I can add, and I've got the reverb, I can add a reverb on there if I wanted. You can add anything, anything in that plugin folder, you can add it in and you can actually visually see it. And then say further down the line, you're working on the track, you want to go back. So audio direct offline processing, and you want to change it. You see, you can, it will still, you highlight the effect you want to work on and you can make those changes. So it's a really handy tool for printing effects directly onto an audio event. But I think the key is here, non-destructively, you can go back. And I, you know, as I say, when you're working on computers like this one I've got, this was this computer I bought for 200 pounds on a budget. Um, 
it's a great way of freeing up your processor because once it's printed those effects that you've chosen, they're no longer running on your CPU in the background. It's literally printed that audio effect until you go back to offline processing and then it'll reenact them um, or reactivate them and then you can make those further changes if you want to tweak it. So yeah, really handy tool.